Hello. I'm going to share with you why you cannot get a college degree in astrology from an accredited college or university in the United States, which is where I happen to live, and in most countries, and also how it could be possible to establish an accredited college that gives a degree in astrology. And by degree, we mean a BA degree or higher degrees like MA and PhD. I have a lot of experience working with this and I'm going to be showing the details of what goes on. I'm not going to be discussing whether we want to have a college like this, whether we should, but what's involved and why we don't. And the reason I have so much experience with this is because I'm a co-founder of the Avalon School of Astrology. I am also the curriculum director and the Avalon School of Astrology is a vocational school that has been licensed since 2003. So that's 17 years that the school has been licensed because I'm making this video in 2020. Now, every, I guess it's every year or so, I, I'm not the person who handles the licensure part of the school. I think every year or two years, the school needs to be renewed. We're probably going to not renew next year. So after what will be 18 years of the school being licensed, we're just going to, you know, let that end. Uh, and I'll share with you why. It, an interesting thing is that as, as far as I know, there is only one other school of astrology in the entire United States that is licensed. So what is licensure? And also you've heard the word accredited like an accredited college, an accredited university. What's the difference between licensing and accrediting? And is it important? And what does it mean to really have a BA degree in astrology? Would the school need to be licensed, accredited? How does this work? And I'm going to explain all this. First thing I want to show you here is that on this website page, avalonastrology.com, it says here in this small white font, licensed by the Commission for Independent Education, Florida Department of Education, license number 2858. So there it is. That's the fact that the school is licensed. Okay, now let's look at what licensed school means and accredited school. And both vocational schools and academic schools have the concept of licensing and accreditation. So vocational school just means you're not getting a BA degree or MA degree, something like that. You're getting a certificate or a diploma in, in training in some program. So licensing means that the school is operating legally. In the United States, each state has authority to license schools. So it's done at the state level. So I'm in the Gainesville, Florida, so our licensing is done through the state of Florida, and each state has slightly different regulations. Now, not every school needs to be licensed. If you're teaching classes at home, and even if you're teaching them online or at an office or facility, it may or may not be required for the school to be licensed. And that's why most schools of astrology are not licensed. They're not required to be licensed. And to get licensed is expensive. It's not like $25 a year, it's going to be hundreds of dollars a year or more, and it's time consuming. It's a very detailed thing in most states, at least in the state of Florida. You have to go to meetings regularly, they come and inspect your facility, they check your catalog, they look at your website. It is really a kind of serious quality control. It's not just, oh, you get a license. So there's a lot involved. And what are the benefits of being licensed? Not very much. <laughs> I mean, nobody seems to really care. We did it. We thought it might be a good idea and we stayed with it. Um, but the public doesn't seem to care very much or understand what it means. Or So there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of benefits as far as I can see. And that's probably why we're going to let it expire. Now, that's licensing. What does accreditation mean? Well, accreditation is an additional optional step 
only a licensed school can apply for accreditation. So you would have to get licensed and then later apply for accreditation and you apply for accreditation with an accreditation agency. <laughs> so it's not done, you know, with the state government or something. It's done with an accreditation agency. And accreditation is even more rigorous because with accreditation, your curriculum gets analyzed in great detail. Exactly what are you teaching? Exactly how are the students evaluated and so on? There's a good amount of that required at the state level and varies according to the state. Here in the state of Florida, they regulate, I would say, pretty thoroughly. But to get accredited is much more rigorous and strict. And the accreditation agencies I investigate the specific details of what you're teaching. OK, so that's accreditation. Now, I've mentioned licensing does not have a lot of benefits as far as I can see. Um, it, it may be legally required <laughs> if you have a you know pretty good sized school or something, check with your state. So in that case, you definitely should get licensed, but it seems to not be required in most situations but you should verify if you have a school of astrology but what about accreditation oh accreditation has huge benefits huge number one if a school is accredited this is true for vocational schools in in many fields now in astrology there are no accredited schools so it's not an issue in astrology but in many professions the accreditation is important not just academic but also vocational so accreditation assures that the curriculum is good it really does because they the accreditation agency checks very carefully also if somebody wants to transfer to a different school so if you have a bachelor's degree program and somebody wants to get a master's degree at a different school it's much easier to transfer credits and for your degree to be recognized by another school or if you go part way through your bachelor's and want to transfer. So transferring credits and acceptance of your degree, like a BA degree to go on to an MA, is much easier. As most of you know, you may have gotten a bachelor's degree at one college and gotten a master's at another and you don't even think about it. It's because the schools are accredited and are in very good standing and the credits are accepted. A, a school will generally not accept any credits from a non-accredited school. Licensing is not enough. Now, and also, licensing is just, you know, if you're only, if the school is only licensed but not accredited, it really lacks the prestige. It's legal, like if you get a BA degree from a licensed school, you have a BA degree, you can put BA after your name, it's not a diploma mill. It's not a, a phony degree. It's real, but it doesn't have the prestige and weight of an accredited school. And some employers require the degree from an accredited college. They will go to Google and they will Google that school and see what if it's accredited or just just licensed, you know, if they haven't heard of it, any major college, all the major colleges and universities, many of the smaller specialized ones as well, they're all accredited. So if you're not accredited, it's like you're legal, but you know, if you were any good, you would have gone ahead and gotten accredited is, is the feeling. Also, scholarships and loans from the federal government and many agencies are available, usually only to accredited schools. And also the college is more stable. Once you're accredited, you're in. <laughs> you're not gonna disappear, but if you're only licensed, you're more vulnerable. What if the laws change? What if the regulations change? Um, you may not get grandfathered in. So accreditation is the gold standard. Licensing is okay to be legal, but accreditation is the gold standard and makes a lot more possible. So that's the difference. And that's why colleges and universities often emphasize that they are accredited. Now I'm going to give you some warnings later Make sure their accreditation is a real accreditation, not a phony one. I'll talk about that later. But that's the big deal. So 
Now, so in astrology, uh, you cannot get a college degree like a BA or MA from an accredited college. You can get a degree in things like the history of astrology, or astrology is a form of cultural astronomy, as some people are calling it, where a degree as a study of astrology is a kind of religious or, or spiritual pursuit. You can do that, but you cannot get a degree from an accredited college by taking courses in interpreting natal charts and compatibility and forecasting and all the things that we astrologers do. Now, uh, in the future, I think a college of astrology can be established and I'm going to tell you how that can happen. There's some hoops that you have to jump through and there are a lot of requirements. Okay, so I've already talked about this. My background uh, with uh, licensing and accreditation of schools. Now, this gets to the heart of why there is not currently college degrees from accredited colleges. What topics are appropriate for a college degree? Carpentry? Generally not. Cosmetology? Not usually an academic degree. Music? Yes. Chemistry, yes. Psychology, philosophy, yes. Astrology, no. Well, what's going on here? Why are some subjects at a college level and others are not? Well, if you think about it for a while and investigate it, here's one way of thinking about it. I'm not saying this is the only way to think about it. But basically, you could divide the kinds of majors that you can have at a university or college into the arts and humanities or the sciences. And the arts and humanities, here's how I've defined it. And again, this is not the only definition or the only way to look at it. But one way to think of it is that there are areas of human experience that are widely regarded as positive. Music is positive. Theater is positive, <laughs> at least potentially. <laughs> it's a good thing for people to do. You know, reading books and English literature and foreign languages, they're, they're all fundamentally good things if you approach it in a, in a positive way. And also where academic study can be helpful. Okay, where there's, a, where there's a lot of cognitive stuff and things to analyze and learn about. So with music, it's endless. Music theory goes on forever and ever. And theater and literature, you know, they're huge. Lots of study, you get lots of exams in it. Um, and so areas like art, history, literature, theater, music, philosophy are all appropriate for a college program. And the other thing that's often uh, a major in, in a college or university are the sciences. And they're roughly divided into the hard and soft sciences. So these are areas where research methods are employed to better understand how something works. So if the field of inquiry is physics or chemistry, hard sciences, or psychology, sociology, which are making statements about how things work, why is someone depressed or anxious or whatever it may be, they're, they're, there's something that can be researched, then that falls into the category of a science, even if it's a soft science like psychology or sociology. And they are required to figure out if what they understand is really true or not based on more than just people's personal experience. So those are the two divisions. Now, there may be exceptions, but this is generally what goes on. Now, and also note that some of the arts and humanities, like music and art, like the visual arts, they can be applied in a soft science way or even a hard science way, possibly. So you have art therapy, music therapy. So there can be blendings. But, you know, I think just about every major that you have at college fits into one or both of these general categories. Now, question, where does astrology fit? Where do we put astrology? Is it an art and humanity? Or is it a soft science like psychology? 
where is it going to be put and what's going to be required of astrology by an accreditation agency which operates in these kinds of ways. So what's going to happen? Well, if you just treat astrology as history, this is what people did, or as a cultural phenomenon, or as a human experience, then it can go into arts and humanities. But if you start saying, is Aries really pioneering? Is Taurus stubborn, etc.? You know, is Mar transiting Mars square natal Uranus or transiting Uranus square natal Mars inclined to accidents or any kind of statement like that? Then what happens is that you're really in the soft science area. So he here it is. Um, and in the second uh, paragraph here, I say, there is no way to completely remove the as above, so below component of astrology. There is some kind of association of what is in the sky with what's happening on Earth. There's a correlation. Correlations can be researched to see if they're really working. So in order for a school of astrology to be accredited, it would need to meet the requirements of soft sciences, which would mean it would need to be analyzed, you know, the in ideas would need to be analyzed um, with more than personal experience. So in bold here in the first paragraph, astrology falls in the soft science category, even if you do not think astrology is a soft science. So what I'm talking about here is not what the truth is. I'm not saying what I believe or what you believe or what anybody believes. I'm telling you how it works. You know, I've, I've been in this for decades, you know, dealing with accreditation and licensing. And we, we've thought about making this, this school an academic school. We've investigated. I've talked to people at accreditation agencies. Uh, you know, I've started the process of applying. You know, I've fiddled around with this for a long time. And I'm just telling you what I've learned about how it works and what, what what the deal is and why we don't have college degrees in astrology from accredited colleges. Um, so rigorous research must be integrated as part of the discipline and part of what is taught. Now, um, but there's more to tell you. So let me just leave it at that for now. And uh, so let's look at well, let me go back to this previous slide. Let me read this bottom paragraph. However, as I will explain, there are two ways, two ways I can think of, there may be more, to create a college of astrology. Okay, so suppose you would like to start a college of astrology or you know somebody who might want to. How would you go about, how would you do that? Okay, I can think of two general approaches um, and uh, to do this without a strong research component. What if you wanted to have a college of astrology where you could learn how to interpret NATO and compatibility and forecast and not have all this research, research, research? Let me show you some tricks that I think would work. One way is to have a college curriculum in astrological interpretation in the usual way we learn astrology is to offer two different specializations. So what you could do is you can have a BA degree in astrology research methods. Okay, so here's the idea. You go to college, you get a degree in astrology with a specialization in astrology research methods. Okay, and if you get a degree in astrology research methods, then there's a lot of emphasis on research design and, you know, there's the statistics and all that stuff involved with research that most astrologers are not really interested in, but you would have to offer that. Okay. And, um, let's see. Then you have another specialization in applied astrology. So here it is here. It took me a little while to find it. And I have a typo here. I have a apply without a D applied astrology. So you have two different specializations. One in astrology research methods and one in applied astrology. Now, in this bottom paragraph, warning, little caveat here. This may not be a perfect solution for all astrologers because the BA degree 
in astrology with a specialization in applied astrology, which means interpretation, is this what astrologers want? They would like to go to college and study how to interpret birth charts and compatibility and forecast and get a college degree for it. Okay, if you want to do that, you're probably going to end up being restricted to the ideas that are supported in the specialization on research. So if in the specialization on research, the students who are taking that program are learning about research in, say it's Hellenistic astrology, that shows some evidence, not 100% compelling, convincing evidence, but some fairly good evidence that those techniques work, and that's not just somebody's personal experience, but some way of validating using modern research methods, then that those Hellenistic methods or Vedic or vibrational astrology or any other system could then be taught to the people who specialize in the applied methods. The idea is you can't make stuff up. <laughs> so from the point of view of academics, you can't just rely on personal experience. Now, I'm not saying they're right. I'm not saying this is the way it should be. I'm saying this is the way it is and why there is not a, a college uh, degree in astrology. So if you offer the two programs, specialization in astrology research methods and also specialization in applied astrology, which means chart interpretation, this would probably work. What you would do is you would first offer the specialization in research methods, get that you know, licensed by the state, then later apply for accreditation. If the accreditation is received, then you could then introduce the applied astrology specialization and you would be talking with the accreditation agency about all that. And I think that that would work. I've talked to people who accredit schools, who work at accreditation agencies, and they tell me this will probably work. They cannot guarantee anything, but it, it's reasonable. You know, there's no guarantees and they really can't, you know, project. It's going to depend on a lot of details and all this material is new and different. So that's possibly a way that you could do it. Number two, a second way to have a college curriculum in astrological interpretation in the usual way we learn astrology is to establish a licensed unaccredited college. So if the college is not accredited, the requirements from the state are not that rigorous. You can probably do what you want to do. So your college will not have the prestige it will not have the impact, but it will be legal. And the letters that the graduates put after their names are real. They're not phony. They're not what we call from a diploma mill. Uh, but, you know, if there was some kind of job the person wanted to get later that required a degree, the employer may not um, honor that degree. They're not required to. They can say, candidates must have a degree from an accredited college. Um, so that's it. If we want to have a BA degree, MA degree, PhD, things like that in astrology, those are the ways we can do it. We can do it as, let me review, we can do it as an accredited college. That would be totally awesome. But then from the people I've talked to, from what I have figured out, you know, working with different accreditation agencies and looking into this, you're probably going to have to be very heavily research oriented and then later possibly be able to add the kind of program that most people would like to see who are involved in learning astrology. Okay, uh, now how would you get a college established? I've explained it, licensing and accreditation and I'm just putting these slides up here in case you want to pause the video and, and read it over. Um, now, a little aside here. There's a third thing that some people have thought about as a way to get a college of astrology. And it's to follow what some of the religious schools do. Religious schools, schools that teach theology or spirituality, are sometimes exempted from the requirements. So you can get a divinity 
you know, uh, degree from a college of theology, and sometimes those schools are not accredited in the usual way, or sometimes not even licensed, and there are some exceptions, and people have talked about the idea of astrology being presented as a kind of spiritual philosophy, and degrees being granted in this context. Uh, this could possibly allow for astrology degrees without licensing or accreditation. You'd have to check with the state regulations. Um, I personally don't think it's a good idea because you're just trying to trick the system and what you're really doing is not theology, you're doing astrology. But I thought I would mention it because some people have considered it. Okay, and I've already talked about this, what accreditation involves. They look at the content of the courses. Now, second paragraph here is very important. Accreditation would be extremely difficult for astrology because what the accreditation agency does is they look at equivalent courses from other colleges to compare. Well, there are no equivalent courses that colleges teach. So if you're going to be learning about, you know, composite charts or Vedic dashas or whatever system of astrology it is, there probably isn't an accredited college currently giving those courses. So it's it's a little bit tough, and that's why you would have to grow gradually by starting with the research component, and which there are equivalent courses for in terms of the methods, and it would be applied to astrology. This would probably work according to the uh, accreditation agency people that I talked to. Um, so, another thing that's involved in all this is a lot of time and money. The uh, Even licensing by the state, as I mentioned before, requires time and money. So if we wanted to start a school of astrology, if someone out there would like to, you can do this. Um, you know, start up uh, with, with one of these plans. Okay, and I've already talked about the benefits of accreditation at the beginning. Now, one more thing to be aware of, accreditation agencies. And this is critically important. It opens up some, some whole big new ideas and possibilities for astrology. What accreditation agency do you go to and uh, does it matter? And what, how, does, how does an accreditation agency happen? I mean, how do you form one? Well, it's very straightforward. Accreditation agencies are approved either directly from the United States Department of Education or from an agency that has been that is approved by the US Department of Education. Again, I'm focusing on the US because that's where my expertise is. In other countries it's going to be a little bit different, usually similar concept, but could be different. So there's an organization in the United States called the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. Their website is www.chea.org. Now, here's an exciting possibility, and many people at accreditation agencies and other people involved in licensing and accreditation have, have said this to me. It comes up all the time. Why don't you astrologers create an accreditation agency? This is what other professions have done. So what you do is you go to chea.org, and you start the application process to become an accreditation agency. If astrology had its own accreditation agency, all problems are solved. <laughs> We're home free. Your school can get licensed by your state, like our vocational school, Avalon School of Astrology. We can transition to an academic degree, to a BA degree. I've already talked to them you know, to, to the Florida Department of Education about this, we can do it. We can get approved. I don't want to do it because I don't want to have just a licensed school. If we're going to give a BA degree in astrology or MA or PhD, I really prefer that it is accredited. That's just my own taste. You know, it's not right or wrong. It's just my preference. Um, so just getting licensed uh, doesn't quite cut it for me. I would want to go all the way and become accredited, and that becomes a very tricky process. It would not be a tricky process if 
there was an accreditation agency for colleges of astrology and some accreditation agencies are geared specifically to certain professions happens all the time there's lots of them some cover lots of areas but some are specific so I mentioned this in the se second paragraph uh, some accreditation agencies approve broad ranges of programs large universities are accredited by what are called the regional accreditation agencies uh, but any CHEA approved accreditation agency is a real accreditation agency okay so there currently of course is not an accreditation agency for astrology why would there be there, there, there are no licensed school there are hardly any licensed colleges of astrology seeking to be accredited so the need hasn't been there but if the accreditation agency was formed and other groups were starting to form colleges this could all work together it would be an enormous undertaking it would cost a lot of time and money um, but it could be done at least a lot to to me you know <laughs> to somebody who's got you know money to invest maybe it doesn't look like so much um, and you know colleges make money and stuff so it's it is a feasible uh, enterprise that could be undertaken to create an accredited college of astrology either by going through the process I've just described where first you would have a specialization in astrology research methods then later in a, a specialization in applied astrology all this would take many years could take up to 10 years you know I don't know how you know depending on how much time and energy is put into it but it could be done it would be expedited if there was an accreditation agency specifically for astrology and how feasible and easy or difficult it would be to create an accreditation agency for astrology I don't know that process would start up by going to chea.org reading the requirements and going through it I can tell you the requirements and details you know are extensive you a lot of time is required with time is money as the saying goes so you know it's a lot of hours going through all of the forms and papers and requirements etc but it's not difficult in the sense that um, you know you have to have a degree in business administration or something to do it but it it's difficult in the sense there's, there's a lot of stuff to go through and you can hit a um, a roadblock at any point nothing's guaranteed I'm not saying this is a guaranteed path but from the people I've talked to from the regulations I've read from what I understand I think it would probably work that all this could be done um, all of what could be done either um, you can definitely create licensed College of Astrology that can definitely be done no doubt about that um, creating an accredited college by using existing accreditation agencies probably can be done I'd say like 90% probability with a lot of work and effort and time and money and if astrology can create its own uh, accreditation agency that's probably 90% probability that could be done probably higher than that and then that would be another way to do it now the other thing about establishing a college would be exactly what the curriculum would be I've actually over time I've scribbled down notes about what the courses for a BA degree could be and um, I I uh, have uploaded it um, to a website and in the explanation of this video in the description of this video I give a link to it it's just scribble it's not nicely formatted but I give details on what a curriculum for a specialization in astrology research methods could be and most astrologers will look at it and say well I'm not interested in that this is way too much technical research method stuff um, but there are people interested in in that and um, I, I describe that in detail it's also my area one of my areas of specialization as well I have an MA degree in uh, research and evaluation methods so you know th that was I was able to do that and um, and then also a rough idea of what 
a BA degree curriculum would look like with a specialization in applied astrology. Okay, and these are just freely available. There's nothing proprietary about it. it run and go with it. It's just stuff I've played around with over more than a decade of being involved in a licensed school of astrology and just being aware and interacting with issues regarding licensing um, and accreditation of schools and periodically people are interested in this kind of thing in the United States and other countries and I learn from them and we explore. Um, and there are projects going on now in Mexico. I know of a project uh, trying to establish an academic college. So, you know, it's an ongoing issue that people are always interested in. There have been attempts, you know, in the United States, as you're probably familiar with, that have lasted for some period of time to have college degrees. So that's what's going on. I thought I would share this since it's something I've been involved with. And there's a lot of um, different ideas about this. So let me just go over the con uh, final conclusions here, just to summarize very quickly. Each state, if you're in the United States, has its own regulations for licensing. In the state of, where, of Florida, where I live, we can establish a college of astrology. It, it, that is definite. Um, and going on to the next level of accreditation, um, it appears optimistic to me that a research-oriented astrology curriculum would be approved. A curriculum that was just applied astrology would not be approved. I mean, almost certainly would not be accredited right now. You'd ha it could possibly be done later after a specialization in astrology research methods was created. The only way we could go directly into a degree in astrology with an emphasis on chart interpretation or what I'm calling applied astrology, I believe in the United States would be to ha first create an accreditation agency in astrology. And even then, I'm not entirely certain you would not also need a BA degree with a specialization in research methods because astrology does fall in the category of soft science in the way that academia looks at this. But in any case, it would be much easier if it's way, you know, hugely easier process if an accreditation agency for astrology could be created. Um, and which is the conclusion that I have here and about these two different specializations. And again, I've said it a million times, maybe I don't need to say it again, but all of this process of licensing and accreditation and or establishing an accreditation agency, it's all expensive and time consuming. Um, you know, it's going to require some real commitment. And, you know, somebody, a group of people need to be in it for the long haul, you know. Um, so let's see. Um, final concluding comments. Is this my last slide? Yes, it is. Well, I've been talking about the mechanics of how this works. What would happen? Let's just reflect for a moment. What would happen if there was a BA degree at an accredited college, not just licensed? Well, when you think about it, college programs are a, a vitally important component of any profession, whether it's psychology, anthropology, and we don't yet have it in astrology. If colleges of astrology were established, accredited colleges, because those, you know, accredited is the heavyweight gold standard. If there were accredited colleges of astrology, astrology would suddenly have stepped much more into the mainstream. Whether people, quote, believe in astrology or don't, or whatever their idea of astrology is, once you have programs at a college level in accredited colleges, you're in the club, man. I mean, whether people like it or not, people may not like some of the other degrees that are given, um, but you're, it, it would change the complexion of what astrology is socially very dramatically. I have no doubt about that. Um, so whether this is good or desirable is not something I, I address in this video. I'm just talking about the consequences and what will happen. Okay, and last thing, last paragraph on my last slide. 
this is a complex subject, the subject of licensing, accrediting, establishing colleges. And I've focused mainly on how it works in the United States. I know it's similar in other countries, not identical. And so what I've presented here is not the perfect final word. If you post something that I overlooked something or didn't explain something properly, well, let's just be respectful about it. We're, we're digging into something that's rarely investigated clearly. And I've been in the middle of it for over a decade, having an actual licensed school of astrology, one of the only ones in the entire country, and watching the process and what's involved. And uh, so I thought, you know, I should share this. It's an important issue. Uh, people often wonder why they can't get a degree in astrology, and I've explained to you why. And it, I think that what I've shared here may not be the perfect final word, but I'm confident it clears away a lot of confusion and misunderstandings about what's going on with the possibility of someday having BA, MA, and PhD degrees in astrology, and from my point of view, hopefully from an accredited college, not just licensed. Thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.